All right. Hello and welcome everyone to this Open77 Seed walkthrough. Uh, this is a feed that was submitted uh, to the Gobo Podcast Discord uh, Mentor Tournament channel by Moocow. I decided to do something a little bit different with this seed, and instead of running it in real time, I decided to use save states. So this would be um, kind of how I would play the seed given kind of unlimited thinking time and uh, kind of unlimited tries to kind of optimize my execution. So I'm going to try and talk about anything interesting that came up in the seed. Uh, so I'm doing my map check right here. I'll just pause it so you can see that there is a red crystal at Hera. So we've got all three crystals in the light world. And you can see I am doing the uncle start. Um, so I'll pick up this sign here. I'll check it by one of the blue guards so that I can get to tier one tree pull. Um, there's lots of different opening routes that work. Um, and the important thing is that you have contingency plans. Oh, something I want to point out right here. So I'm pulling this tree. Uh, let me make sure my mouse cursor shows up. So I'm pulling this tree uh, on the right side. And the reason I do that is because if you pull this tree on the side, as you pull, you'll get knocked into this, uh, this little uh, mini tree here. And that will actually stop your backwards momentum. So um, you'll travel a little bit further back. Um, of course, the, the, your timing on that screen is largely determined by, by lag frames, but um, you know it's, it's a little optimization that I like. Um, I do like to pick up these two pots uh, for, for the magic drops inside them, and uh, I'll try and um, get one of these guard kills, just in case they drop something nice, like a full magic. Um, it can also set up for a later tree pull as well. And uh, we get a lamp, and I'll save and quit out of here. Um, so as I was saying, for opening routes, um, there's various trade-offs between the different routes. You know, a lot of people start Sanctuary instead, which is totally fine. Um, I just do the Uncle Strike because it's what I'm used to. Uh, but the important thing is you want to have contingencies for... Uh, you want to get to Kakariko pretty early, and you want to have contingencies for if you don't have enough money or if you don't have any bombs. So be prepared. Uh, have a plan ahead of time for what you want to do in those situations. I'm gonna uh, fast forward through some of the boring parts here. Where we're just walking, gonna check Lost Woods, it's pretty straightforward. And we got early came Samaria. Um, sometimes that might indicate that there's uh, something at Turtle Rock, but uh, not really a concern right now. I'm going ahead and checking up this bush crab drop uh, just because I have no bombs yet, and it would be more efficient to clear Kakariko if I had some bombs on hand first. Uh, but I do have enough money to buy bombs. And it looks like I will probably have to do that. Um, I'm not a fan of going into blind slot without bombs and just hoping that I get bombs, so I like to play it a little bit safe. Uh, in this screen, um, you can actually avoid this guard most of the time. Um, if you do a correct uh, movement juke, I have a video tutorial on this actually, uh, if you look at my channel. Um, a lot of people go down and they go uh, to the left side here and jump down here, which is a lot slower. Uh, in fact, uh, it, even if you take the hit from this guard, it's going to be faster than if you go this safe path. And usually you have enough hearts to take to take a hit from this guard and be fine. And you'll pick up some hearts in the um, in Kakariko anyways, so you, you, you usually don't need to be super safe there. Alright, so now since I have no bombs, I don't want to go into Blind's Hut. I'm going to go and check the back of the bar, just in case there's bombs here. And I don't think there were bombs here. We had flute, which is really nice. Um, that makes some of the early game decisions a lot easier because uh, you don't have to pay a cost to get to a lot of places. So I'm just going to go ahead and buy some bombs. And then I'll go ahead and finishing, finish the rest of these CAC checks. Uh, something that you can do, um, I'm not doing it here because I don't need to flute right away, but uh, after activating the flute, if you want to use the flute right away, uh, you can quick swap back and forth uh, to a different item, and that will make you able to use the flute uh, immediately. Uh, normally there's a delay before you can use it. So not enough money for Bottle Vendor just yet, but um, that's fine because we'll get enough money if we go to um, after we finish the rest of this stuff. Uh, one thing here is if you're throwing this bomb uh, across this chest, make sure you don't open the chest immediately because for some reason opening the chest will actually make your bomb bounce off and it will not go all the way through. So um, if you're throwing the bomb this way, um, be a little bit careful about that. You want to delay for a, a, little, a split second. Okay, and that's standard stuff. I am picking up all the rupees here because I'm going to need them. And we'll go to Blind's Hut. 
pretty standard stuff, and we see that we actually would have gotten bombs here, so we would have gotten rewarded if we had just uh, YOLO'd and then come in here without bombs, but, you know, of course there's no way to know that. Okay, then I'll um, do the bottle vendor check, and then I'll be on my way to check race game and um, library ledge. Library ledge, it was just a red ruby, so no need to worry about that there. Uh, in my testing, uh, walking straight downwards here um, is actually a little bit slower, it seems, because you kind of get caught on this weird ledge. Uh, so walking to the right here, um, I think, saves a few frames. I'm not entirely certain, but I, from my testing, I think it's a little bit faster, even though you have to walk to the right and walk to the left. And we check out race game. And you can actually call your flute early. Um, but if you see it's the mushroom, you can just dodge the, you can just dodge the duck. I mean, if you, if you want to play it safe, of course you can, you can always wait. But you know, since I'm doing uh, save states, you know, I was 100% uh, confident in my execution here, so um, that's what I did. Okay, so we'll go and pick up that mushroom. Now, some people would want to turn in this mushroom right away. Other people would want to hang on to it for as long as possible because we do have the Cane of Samaria. So um, it will uh, allow for a potential fake fake powder glitch. Uh, something else you could do is... Um, oh, I forgot to mention. Uh, something else you could do is you could um, try to save scum the mushroom turn in um, if you have a good place to save and quit. I decided to just fly to the dam first because um, this is an easy check. I'll do the dam and a mini Moltworm cave because I have the flute, so there's no real reason to put these two checks off. So, I decided not to grab that money for now. Um, debatable whether, whether you need it, but I decided not. I'm pretty far away from having enough money for Zora, so I decided it wasn't important. Okay, mini Molorn Cave. Uh, you can either use bombs or you can use a King of Samaria here. Or you can use a combination of both, like I do here. Whatever um, works out. So nothing really from here. So here I'm going to flute away and just do uh, Ice Rod Cave. Again, there's no real reason to put this off. Uh, the only reason you'd want to put this off is if you uh, had are waiting to get the boots, uh, and then you can do a uh, water walk, set up a water walk in Ice Rock Cave. But um, I generally only like to do that if I have money for Zora anyways, and I'm very far uh, from doing that, and I don't have the boots, so um, there's no real reason to put this off. Now from here, you have a couple different options. Uh, you can check Bottle Vendor, uh, sorry not Bottle Vendor, you can check Sick Kid, uh, you can go do the Mushroom Turn-In, uh, you can check Agina, go to Eastern Palace, there's a lot of different options. So I decided to just turn the bottle. Again, not that much. Uh, I'm trying to put off uh, making any committal choices right now. So this is kind of like the least risky play, right? Um, in terms of I really don't lose anything by doing this. Um, for the Mushroom Turn-In, for example, you do lose the chance to fake powder. Um, so I want to put that off a little bit. Going up the mountain, it would be nice if I have uh, the hammer or the mirror uh, or the hook shot before I get there, so it's nice to put that off. Um, same thing with like uh, Eastern Palace, it would be nice if I have a glove. Uh, I like putting that off until I have a glove, because then if you have a glove, it makes Check and Sahasrila kind of free, because you can uh, use your glove to go to Eastern Palace uh, very easily using the flute. Um, So here I'm deciding to do the mushroom turn-in. Uh, again, I'm putting off, kind of putting off the Eastern Palace area because I don't have the gloves. And I don't feel too bad giving up the opportunity to fake powder here. And I'll take the mail upgrade, that's, that's totally fine. Okay, and here we're doing from escape. So again, I'm trying to choose kind of the least uh, committal option. I feel like uh, you have to do front of escape at some point anyways. And 
Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do it now. It would be nice, a little bit nicer if we, you know, waited until we had the boots, or maybe we could combo it together with Pyramid Ledge, but I'm not going to hold my breath there. I think uh, in hindsight, I would have played this a little bit differently. I think it would have been better to flute to, um, flute to Desert Area and check Agina, and then save and quit from Agina, and then go and do Run Escape from there. The reason why is because you always want to save and quit uh, out of Agina because um, that check is really slow to walk out from. So you always want to save and quit from there. And then you can save and quit to, to Link's house uh, instead of fluting to Link's house. It's just kind of more efficient in terms of your save and quit and flute um, usage. Mm. That would have actually worked out a little bit better. Uh, in, the, in the long run, it didn't end up mattering that much, um, but that would have been a little bit better. So I think in hindsight, I would have done that. Okay, so we're escape here. Um, so Mario makes it relatively easy. And for the ball and chain card, uh, it is going to be fastest to use the fire rod here. Unfortunately, uh, we are going to want to check Dark Cross here, uh, just in case it's the key. I'm setting up a palm here just because I need to take a lot of damage. Unfortunately, I already have blue mail, so it's going to take a long time to do this death work. So you could argue that maybe this wasn't this was a reason that you should stay away from from escape, and maybe for example go up to the mountain or go check um, Sahashvila's closet uh, instead. I think those are perfectly valid choices. There's no one right one right way to to route a seed. So here we get to Dark Cross. And we'll see that it is the Moon Pearl. So I'm glad that we got to pick that up. So here, um, I'm forced with a choice of we can either go to the mountain, we can go to the Eastern Palace area, or we can go check Akina. Those are our three real main choices. You know, there's also um, some sequence breaks you can do, but those are our three main choices. I think I choose to do the mountain here because Again, I want to try and stay out of Eastern Palace area until I either have the glove, which makes checking Sahashrila very free, or, uh, you know, I have a bow so that I can full clear Eastern Palace. So doing the mountain, yeah, it would be nice if I have the hammer or the mirror or the hookshot before I come here so I can do some more checks. But, um, you know, doing Old Man and Spectacle, uh, Spec Rock Cave, doesn't really lose me that much time. It is true that if I get the mirror later, I'm probably going to have to do this this walk again. A little, you know, debatable. debatable. Maybe I should have gone the Eastern Palace first. Uh, that was just a red ruby, by the way, so there's nothing there. Okay, so I didn't find anything there. Uh, I think I found... I forgot how many, how many items I found in Escape. I think there's a... Uh, I think there's only... I think there's actually only one item left in Escape, if I remember correctly. So now I decide to go to Eastern. I think... Honestly, I should have checked Agina um, board a little bit earlier, especially because there's a possibility that the bow is in Agina, and checking Agina is uh, relatively quick since I have the flute, so I think I should have done that before, um, but... Well, here, here we are anyways. So check Sashila's closet. Uh, I think actually... You know, I think actually the reason why I decided to come here uh, instead of doing Agina was because if you look at my items, I need uh I I'm I need two items for progression to the dark world, right? I need either a glove or I need either two gloves, a glove and a hammer, or I need um a cape and a sword to do to do Aga. And so I know that no matter what Agina is, I'm gonna have to find some progression in the Eastern Palace. So I decided to just come to Eastern Palace. Now that logic is actually a little bit flawed because Maybe the bow is at Agina, so I think I still should have checked Agina first. Um, but that was my thought process. Mm -hmm. Eastern Palace here. Okay. It is faster to jump and go through these cannonballs again uh, if you do not have the boots. If you have the boots, it's faster to go the other way and dash, I think. And this is standard Eastern Palace stuff, and there's our hammer. 
And again, I'm still looking for at least one more item, so I'm definitely going to continue going on. Uh, for these pots, it is faster to lift the one with... So this one has a heart in it, if you need a heart. It is a little bit faster to lift this one instead, um, just because of the movement. So if you don't need the heart, you should lift that one instead. And then Stalfos room, I just did it using, using pots. There's various strats for this room. Uh, you can even use the fire rod if you really wanted to, but um, that costs a lot of energy. Uh, it costs a lot of magic, so... Okay, that was one more item in Eastern Palace. Uh, for this room, you can avoid hitting this, this switch again if you uh, hug the left side of the wall. And that will save you some frames because you won't have to wait for the little pause uh, for the door opening. And in this next screen here, uh, if even if you don't usually um, uh, pump your movement, this is a really good screen to pump because uh, during this section you can actually double pump. So you can press both up and down, uh, so you can wiggle between left up and left down, and it'll get you you know twice the amount of chances to pump uh, your movement. So you can actually go pretty fast. Here I'm doing the damage boost trick um, to get this chest a little bit faster. So we're leaving behind one item in Eastern Palace, which means that our progression has to be at Agina. So I'm going to go check that next. So there definitely has to be something there. I'm just going to scout the Desert Ledge here, which is just 300 rupees. And then our progression is going to be at Agina. So it's probably going to be a glove, most likely. Uh, here, uh, you can you can just lift this bomb and hold it over your head because you're going to save and quit anyway, so your life doesn't matter. That's the fastest way to get through there. And there's our glove. And since we have glove, we can go ahead and grab that last item from the back of the escape. Uh, whenever you have glove and you have bombs, this is a very easy check to do. So I'll go ahead and finish that up. So one of these is a key, one of these is a map, and that's the last item, so I don't even need to open that chest. We're done with escape. Okay, so now uh, it's time to talk about what do we want to do in the Dark World. There's two options, right? You can go to the Kakariko portal, and you can try and do maybe Thieves Town. Uh, un unfortunately, you don't have a sword, so Thieves Town, you know, if you're not comfortable with uh, Hammer Blind Strats or Samaria Blind Strats, that could be a problem. We have the Fire Rod, so we can explore a lot of Skull Woods, but unfortunately we don't have a sword to complete Skull Woods. Of course, we actually don't know whether e either of those two are pendants or crystals either. Um, the other option is we could go start at uh, the portal next to Hype Cave. Um, we can just go straight to Hype Cave. Maybe we could get a sword or uh, something, other, something else useful. Um, probably want to stay out of uh, Palace of Darkness for now, because we don't have a bow, so we can't full clear it. We'd be committing to a double dip. Um, but uh, there's, there's some different options here. So right now, I think since I don't have a sword, um, I'm going to opt to go to Hype Cave to just get more items and more information. And uh, I could go to the left and clear Hunt, uh, Stumpy and Dig Game. Or I could also go, alternatively go upwards and clear Pyramid Ledge and Catfish. I think uh, that is what I elected to do. Uh, eventually, I did Hype Cave into Pyramid Ledge and Catfish, you know, assuming I don't get any items. Um, there's arguments for kind of any of these choices. You could also just go to Kakariko and stumble into Skull Woods, even though you can't full clear it. Uh, and you can just dip Skull Woods. That's a very common strategy. Uh, I also want to say, uh, walking to this portal, you want to walk into it from the left side. That will help you get a quick warp and uh, save you some frames there. So we're doing our map checks. We got um, Pendants at uh, Thieves Town and DR and Misery Wire. So it's nice to see that we don't need any medallions necessarily to complete the game. That's nice. Uh, unfortunate that Thieves Town is pendant because, um, you know, it's an easy dungeon to get to, but, you know, that's how it is. And our other red crystal is at Swamp, which we are pretty far from clearing. So we're going to go to Hype Cave and see what we get from there. So, Ice Rod. Kind of spooky because we now have the trifecta of Fire Rod, Ice Rod, um, or we have Fire Rod, Ice Rod, Hammer, and Samaria. And so we have a lot of items for TR, and TR is a, is a pendant. I forgot to mark that on my tracker, so TR is a pendant. Uh, I think Hera was the green, uh, red crystal. And 
Uh, what was the other pendant? Miser Miser Meyer. I forget which one was which one was green pendant. Uh, I think it was TR. Okay. Uh, so like I said, I'm deciding to go upwards uh, to Pyramid Ledge and Catfish. You could argue that this is kind of slow because it takes a long time to get all the way to Catfish, but Catfish is kind of one of those awkward checks where it tends to be pretty isolated because it's way out in the middle of nowhere, right? So this is one of the options to route in Catfish. Um, it's kind of like, if you're not going to do this, then when are you ever going to do Catfish, right? So another option is you could delay and wait until you get the, potentially get the mirror, and you could combo Catfish with like going from Graveyard Ledge uh, over to Catfish, and then you can mirror from Catfish and check um, some items in the Zora domain, assuming you, you have the flippers or something like that. Um, or uh, you can do the last splash delete, you might be able to finish all of that. So that is another option uh, if you wanted to to do to do it that way. I decided to do it this way because I wasn't super interested in going to pod uh, without a bow because there's a possibility that it could be bow locked and you could just uh, not be able to complete it. I do have a green potion, I believe, so I could uh, clip through, um, do the pod uh, potion unlock glitch, but I still can't clear it, and I'm not really ready to commit to a double dip of pod yet if i can avoid it because i still have you know other stuff to do i can still do all the village of outcasts uh, i can still do all of thieves town so i'd rather do something else before i commit to that but as i said i also kind of want a sword if possible so i can clear skull woods uh, it'll make thieves town a little bit easier But again, I think it's perfectly reasonable if you want to uh, not do catfish here and wait until you, for example, have the mirror. Okay, so that didn't pay out with anything, so we're going to instead go to the Kakariko portal. Now your next decision is, are you going to dip into Skull Woods? And for some people, they um, you you should have your own rule. Oh, this is another point where um, if you walk into this warp uh, from the left side, uh, it depends on where you enter this room and uh, whether you have dash beforehand. But if you enter, usually if you enter this warp from the left side, you get a quick warp. Uh, so now you gotta decide whether you want to dip into Skullwoods. Some people uh, have a rule of always going to Skullwoods um, when you go and come to this, to this portal. Uh, for me, it kind of depends on whether Skullwoods is a pendant or a crystal. Since I have the Fire Rod already and Skullwoods is a crystal, I'd like to try and clear it in one go if possible. So all I'm missing is, is a sword, right? And there's four, there's four swords out there somewhere. So if I can come back with a sword, I'll be able to just do Skullwoods in one go and not have to... Um, Hopefully, um, you know, not have to do a ton of backtracking. You could argue that full clearing skull woods, you kind of have to do some backtracking anyways, but you know, that's that's kind of my rule. So we do village backcast, so we score the Titan Smiths here. Um so that opens up um, a couple things. Um, you can sequence break into Ice Palace if you wanted to. Uh, not it's not in logic because you don't have flippers, but you can do that. Uh, opens up uh, Mire Shed as well, and uh, it also opens up uh, uh, Muriel's Smith Chain. And now we got the flippers, so we can actually have logical access to uh, Ice Palace, although it might be hookshot locked. So I'm going to go into Thieves Town here. The next decision we, we need to make is are we going to full clear Thieves Town, or are we going to maybe just check the front? Unfortunately, we do have red mail, so it's going to take a long time uh, if you want to do a death warp here. I probably should have actually um, taken the chance to um, take some damage from some of these enemies um, while I was walking through here. Uh, especially the, the fire bars, um, they do one harder damage, uh, even if you on red mail. So when you're walking to the town, you want to think, okay, how many items, if there's, you know, if I'm if I'm getting how many items are there in the front and how many items are in the back and you know at what what threshold do I want to uh, go into the back versus not and I think if I remember correctly there were two items in the front here and I decided that since I just got okay there's a sword right so I think since since I just got my mitts and my sword right 
Right, so there's there's two items, right? So there's two more items here in, in Thieves Town. Um, do I want to go through the process of going doing this hunt whole dungeon, right, for those two items? Um, or do I want to go do other stuff? And I decided since since I have the mitts, I can do all the smith chain stuff without the mirror, granted, but I can do smith chain stuff. I can get the two items from Skullwood, since I can full clear that now. And uh, I can get two items from Misery Mire Shed from Mire Shed, and then I can also do um, Ice Palace. Um, I decided that I had better things to do, and um, I could potentially save the rest of Thieves Town for a second trip, because if I'm com if I'm going to do Mirrorless Smith Chain at some point, I'm going to have to be in this area again anyways. So I decided that I wasn't interested in doing the back right now. Uh, unfortunately, that means since I don't have a mirror, I need to take a pretty lengthy um, Death Warp here. So again, it would have been a little bit better uh, if I had... Uh, have the foresight to maybe take some uh, damage earlier in this dungeon, but here I just have to walk into the enemies again and again. Okay, so we're going to continue on our way. Uh, for this room, it doesn't really matter whether you leap off this ledge or you go down the stairs. Uh, it's kind of your preference. Uh, they might be maybe a few frames faster if you leap down the ledge, but it, it really doesn't matter. I haven't, I haven't tested it with, like, task level execution. I see some people go down uh, down into the left uh, when they're going to the game. That's that's definitely slower. I have a video comparison of that. Uh, so you definitely want to go this way. Okay, we're digging. Uh, something you do want to think about um, is when you're doing the game is if you need any money, you, you do want to try and collect these rupees. And we do need money because we're still a long ways from having enough money for Zora, and we do want to get to that at some point, especially since we have the flippers. So all of that, um, all of that stuff is in logic. You do want to try and collect these rupees if possible. Okay, so here I actually decided. Um, that what I'm going to do is, so I definitely want to check Stumpy, right? Because um, that's kind of on my way. I decided that I'm going to take the Smith and uh, take the Smith to Stumpy. And the reason why is, so I didn't want to commit to doing, so I, ha I have the, how do I explain this? So I have, I, have the, I have the flute, right? So later on when I decide to check Purple Chest, I can uh, use the flute to check to take purple chest uh, and do the turn in there. So my my idea is okay. I can take the smith to Stumpy, then turn in do the do the smith check um, by just looting to Kakariko, and then later if I want to, I can do hammer pegs plus purple chest later. So that is what I'm doing. So we'll go ahead and do the smith turn in. Okay. And again, since I have the flute, I don't. I can put off, kind of put that off, right? I can go do this stuff. So I think uh, what I decided to do here was I decided to do. Oh yeah, yeah I decided to do Skull Woods. Just knock that out of that. Out of knock that out since I um, it's a full, fully clearable crystal. No reason to put that off. Uh, here is an example where uh, walking in from the left side of this portal does not actually get you a quick warp, just because of um, you entered uh, the previous screen using the flute. If it's kind of weird. Uh, I do like to clear uh, skull woods from back to front, just in case you know I can find uh, the items, uh, find the two items, and not have to you know even go into the front, since you always have to um, clear Mothula since it's a crystal. Uh, I will clear. I will get this check um, all the way, because this check is easier to do uh, going this way. Okay, we got a mirror, so we can just use that right away. There is one item left in Skull Woods. And we'll make our way to Mothala. For the Mummy Hellway, there's there's uh, various different strats. The one I like to do is two Fire Rod shots here, and then I hug this wall so that this mummy uh, turns this way. 
I'll lift this pot and chuck it upwards at this one. And then if I had enough, uh, if I had enough magic, I would just fire rod both of these and then fire rod the top one. But I don't, so I actually have to switch and collect both of these and use the lamp. Here, I save some time by using Boomerang to collect that key. And there's a small magic in this top pot if you need it. Um, but uh, again, since I'm using save states, I'm not really, not really worried about that. And normally this fight would be maybe a little bit tricky um, since you're using the hammer, but again, I have save states, so I'm not really worried about it. Plus I have red mail and a ton of hearts, so it's, you're not really in any danger. Okay, so both that's down, and we still have to go back in because we need to collect um, the last item out of Skull Woods. Well, unfortunately, we do have to walk all the way back out to the front. Um, some people would argue that maybe it's better to Always, always clear the front first instead of going straight to the back and that way you don't have to do this backtracking. Uh, I haven't really landed on a firm opinion on that yet. That's still something I have to think about. I can use the mirror to get back here right away. And as soon as I find the other item, which I believe is in this chest, it's powder, then I can just use the mirror and then I'm done here. Okay, so now we have a lot of different options. We have the mirror, uh, which means, uh, well, first of all, we just got the powder, which means uh, magic bat is open. So once, when we're doing uh, hammer pegs and uh, purple chests later on, we can also do magic bat at the same time. But uh, since we have the mirror, we also opened up um, all of the light world death mountain checks, um, as well as super bunny cave. So there's a lot of den item density over there. Uh, we do still have ice palace and the flipper checks. Um, to do. I decided to play this um, pretty uh, conservatively and I didn't want to isolate uh, Graveyard Ledge. So I figure if I want to do Graveyard Ledge, I should probably do it. I should probably do that now. And I also will scout Bumper Cave uh, along the way. It's totally reasonable to, uh, and I'm also going to check Lumberjack Cave because I did not do that yet. Now it's totally reasonable if you want to uh, not do this. Uh, for example, you could argue that you want to save Graveyard Ledge until you have enough money for Zora. That way you can do the combo of Graveyard Ledge, uh, walk to the right, and if you haven't done Catfish yet, you can do Catfish, and then you can mirror and do all the Zora checks, right? And that would work out nicely. So if you had played that a little bit differently, that might have worked out nicer, right? Again, we talked about waiting for the mirror before you do a Catfish, so that is another option. It's not what I did, but it is another perfectly valid option. Uh, another argument is, you know, since you have the flute, getting back to the Kakariko portal, uh, since you have the flute in the midst, getting back to the Kakariko, Kakariko portal really doesn't cost you that much time. You're not really gaining that much from doing Graveyard Ledge right now. I think, in general, I tend to play pretty conservatively in terms of not wanting to isolate locations. I want to be, you know, I want to not leave one-offs everywhere, um, so I'm not very aggressive in that in that regard. I think it's it's very reasonable if you want to be a little bit more aggressive than I am. So here, our two main options are, I think, going up the mountain is a pretty reasonable play, since there's a lot of items up there. Um, I actually decided to sequence break and go to Ice Palace. The reason why is because, um, number one, I have a full magic bar, um, so I'll have, I'll have enough magic to do, to do the dungeon. I have Samaria, which means I can do Icebreaker, which makes it relatively fast. Um, and I also have a green potion, which means that I can use Fire Rod on uh, Cold Stair, so I won't have to do like a Fire Sword or Hammer Cold Stair. So Ice Palace is going to be pretty fast. It is um, going to be potentially uh, Hookshot Locked, but I don't see a reason to put that off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And it's possible, for example, that the Hookshot is in here, or maybe we get a medallion for TR and uh, we can check more stuff, uh, or maybe the boots are in here. Um, we can check more stuff up on the mountain, right, by putting it off. Uh, here's another example of a warp where you want to step in from the left side to get a quick warp. Okay. 
and you can use the boomerang on the hook shot to um, get this key easier. So a nice balance. Um, coming up, we have the room with the pen gators. Uh, Koi has a nice tutorial on, on some different strats for this room. Um, there's a strat that you can use with two bombs where you kind of uh, stop at this second second tile here. I'll lay two bombs and then throw one to the left. You need to pause a little bit and then you can move on your way and the two bombs will clear all the pen gators. I'm going to use the boomerang to collect this small magic since it's nice to have more magic for Ice Palace. Um, later we'll be fighting Cold Stare with the Fire Rod. And I am planning on full clearing this, uh, so I'm not going to elect to hit the crystal switch here. Now, there's different ways of routing Ice Palace um, depending on kind of uh, your personal preferences as well as the key layout. Um, there's it's it's a little bit complicated to get into all of the details, and I'm not sure I have. Again, I'm not going to claim that I have all of the best strategies or the best routing. Uh, I already saw some mistakes that I made in this run already. Um, here's what I did. Alright, so we got the book out of Ice Palace. With this room, what I like to do is hold, hold down and to the left uh, with, this, with your sword out, uh, coming out of the door. I'll do two hammer swings, and I'll transition uh, kind of when the fire bar is hitting this this tile. I'll tr transition to only holding the left. And then when I'm near here, you'll transition back to holding down down into the left. And let out your sword spin. Should probably <laughs> enable my input display. All right, since I since I got the big key here, I can just go and check the big chest right away. If I didn't, I would have to bomb jump over to Ice T. There's other routes that will um, pan out a little bit differently, but this is what I decided to do this time. Unfortunately, I do have to check um, IT room. And from here, it is definitely faster to go back this way um, to get to the boss, rather than going up the stairs. It's a little bit more awkward since you have to deal with all the ice, but um, I tested it and this way um, is faster. Even without the hookshot. With, with the hookshot, it's, it's quite a bit faster. You should also be thinking about your uh, magic as you're going through Ice Palace. Um, so I don't actually have enough magic for Cold Stare, um, but that's fine, again, because I have a green potion. So if you need more magic, there's uh, you can go into that room over there, or there was a magic, um, small magic, in the um, long vertical ice room uh, with the two pen gators at the bottom. Alright, so we've got to use Fire Rod, and we're going to have to drink our green potion here. And you want to spin to send uh, the Cold Stare Puffs to the left, because the splash damage from the Fire Rod will work more effectively that way. And this should be the last item of the dungeon. It is just a red rupee, so we didn't get anything out of Ice Palace, which is fine. Our next course of action is probably going to be to go up the mountain. But um, I think before that, I wanted, since I'm ready here, I'm going to quickly check Lycaelia, which is just a piece of heart. And I'll check Hobo because, you know, again, because I'm, I'm ready here. Still don't have enough money for Zora, so I'm going to put off that. Luckily, I have the flute. So, um,. Uh, getting to the Zora area is, is very fast, so I don't have to worry about when I do that. So I can I can put that off until I have the money. Alright, so as I said, I'm going up the mountain now. No real reason to do anything else, I think. We have a full clear full clear Hera. 
and then we can do um, most of this, most of the other stuff on the mountain, minus um, you know, Hookshot Cave, and uh, Spike Cave is also not logic. And of course, we cannot get into uh, TR since we don't have any medallions. It is possible that you can, um, since we have a red potion, maybe you can think about uh, sequence breaking into uh, Spike Cave, but I wasn't really interested in doing that. Uh, it is pretty slow to walk in and out of, and uh, if I really need to do Spike Cave later, I can just um, start at the mountain again and then uh, use the mirror. So going to Tower of Hair here, you want to have your mirror selected for this room. That way, if it's trash like the compass, you can just mirror right away. And then here we are going to get a small key, which means we do have to do the basement. Because the big key is in there, no way around it, and we don't have a hookshot to do the pot, so I'm just going to have to do this. This is a very common trick. I can use the iframes from being on this peg. Um, you have to ha you have to hit the crystal switch um, in the next room, anyways. So you might as well just do it this way. And there's a big key. Go up here. There's various strategies for this room. I'm using one that's pretty close to the NMG strategy, where you uh, do one slash to hit that hit um, this beetle and activate the switch at the same time, and then you use these two pots for the other ones. I am from Hera, and then uh, for this bomb jump, uh, you can actually lay the bomb before. If you're doing a spin slash setup, you can actually lay the bomb first, and then just do the spin slash afterwards. Maybe a little bit of time. So that's both items out of Hera, so all you have to do is um, take down Moldorm. And you've probably seen people do this, but you can actually slide past um, and skip uh, through this bumper if your positioning is correct. Obviously, you should only do that if you're confident, because falling down there um, wastes a lot of time. So, Moldorm, uh, three hammer hits or three uh, charged uh, spin slashes. Okay, and then we'll continue on our way. Check all this stuff. Flooding Island was just a heart container, so we don't need to worry about, don't need to worry about that. We have sword, beam here, sword beams here, um, so we can clear these berries even if they are um, you know, active and electrocuting. Uh, so here, a little bit of Death Mountain routing. So we want to we want to check uh, all the items in Paradox Cave. We also want to check Super Bunny Cave, um, and we would also like to check uh, the TR, TR medallion requirement just in case that comes up. Um, because remember, we are pretty suspicious, suspicious of TR. We have all the items to get in there. We got Camus of Maria very early on, and we had that Ice Rod and uh, Fire Rod um, and Hammer combination pretty early on as well. So I do want to check that medallion. So I think the fastest way is actually going to be, I, I think I timed this, you want to go up Paradox Cave and then use the um, Turtle Rock portal um, and then check Super Bunny Cave from the top. It's going to end up being the fastest way um, to do all these checks. And uh, since we did get uh, Kane of Burna from uh, Tower of Hera, we could elect to do Spike Cave as well. So I think uh, currently the plan is after doing Super Bunny Cave, um, go over and check that. But since we got a bow, now we can full clear pod and Eastern Palace, so I think um, at this point I'm electing to probably skip out on, on a spike cave. Since we have two, two full clearable. We have full clearable pod and then we can get the other item from Eastern Palace. So I think if we want to do spike cave, we can just do that later. Uh, I, have a, I have a tutorial on that uh, Paradox Cave bomb jump uh, setup, by the way, if you want to take a look at that. Uh, if you're not uh, familiar with how the pit physics work to set up that bomb jump. Okay, Turtle Rock Portal. And Turtle Rock Medallion is Quake. Got a 
shovel and a ruby. So as I said, I'm not worried about spike cave. I have better things to do, and I'm just going to go ahead and do the very straightforward option of uh, full clearing pod and doing eastern palace. No sense in doing anything else right now. You always want to think about your key logic. There's our first small key. Remember, there's at, always at least four small keys in the front. There's a second small key. There's a third one, and I believe there's a fourth one as well. Uh, so we know the back two uh, items. Uh, the other two items in the front could be small, could be um, anything. They don't need to be small keys, they don't need to be not small keys, but we don't know what they are. Using silvers, these guys. Alright, so we got the map, and I believe uh, this one is a random item. Oh no, it's a big key. You could opt to um, go ahead and do Helma immediately from here, since we have the big key. Um, if I didn't have the mirror, I would probably do that. But since I have the mirror, I'm just going to go ahead and go straight to the back. Um, uh, that way I can do a, um, a ham hammer jump. Uh, one other advantage of doing Helma Sword immediately is you don't have to dodge through all these beetles uh, like I just did. So that is another consideration. Sometimes they can be annoying, annoying, especially since you don't have the hook shot to stun them. Okay. I decided to to do it this way just because routing uh, through Dark Maze, uh, going the reverse way, um, is a little bit faster, right, than having to do it. Uh, from uh, having to do it front to back after um, doing doing the rest of the back. This way I can go straight from those and then go over to the right side, rather than having to go to the right side first and then doubling back, going to the left to Dark Maze, if that makes sense. So we know there has to be two small keys here, that's one of them. So if one of these is also a small key, we know we need to check Karma's Hallway. Which Okay, for some reason <laughs> for some reason I didn't check Karma's Hallway. Okay, bad on me. I guess I just uh brain farted there. So you should have checked Harmless Hallway, and I think from Harmless Hallway, uh it's actually faster to just walk to Helmosaur rather than the rather than mirror. So oh wow, I can't believe I messed that up. <laughs> Uh, so really, you should have checked Carmen Salve and then walked over here through this door and went Helma that way. Um, I guess I just got lucky. I think I got the last item on, on, on Helma Sword anyways. That's embarrassing. Well, it happens. Sometimes we miscount items. Uh, or, or small keys in this case. Board stuff. If you have any trouble on execution in any of these rooms, you can always look up uh, the FMG MG tutorial. I have a lot of strats for these things. One thing is, uh, if you when you're flipping these turtles, uh, you actually want to pound the ground in front of them rather than pounding the turtles themselves, because if you pound the turtles themselves, it will give you a little bit of a knockback that will slow you down a little bit. Uh, for Helmosaur, uh, if you want to hold your sword out during this fight, that's actually what I usually do. Uh, it can be a little bit easier to get the timing of the hammer hits, um, but it is a little bit more... It is going to be a little bit faster to not hold your sword out because you move a little bit faster. You're going to be able to get your hits in a little bit easier. You want to be counting your, your hits here, um, because once you get to the you know your 17th hit, uh, you can 
any fireballs that are on the screen will despawn when uh, the when the helmet breaks. So you can use that. You can abuse that fact and wait for him. If he's about to shoot a fireball, you can wait to do your last hit. That way you won't have to deal with any fireballs for the second phase. Since I have silvers, I can just launch one silver and then it'll be easy. I think I get the last item here, so I didn't I wasn't punished for my <laughs> negligence. Yeah. But I just lucked out in that case. Uh, but don't do what I did. Check check <laughs> check check uh, harmless hallway when you're supposed to. So here, uh, some people might be afraid that if you mirror right immediately after exiting pod, that you'll run into your mirror uh, when you're exiting Eastern Palace, but that's actually not the case. You can actually just mirror straight from exiting pod, and you'll see later when we come out of Eastern Palace, we won't we won't actually run into the portal. All right, so we're getting our last item in Eastern Palace uh, from Arrows Knights, and then we'll have to decide uh, what to do from here. We have a lot of different options. Okay, so here I elected to do the three arrow strat. This is a strat that whenever I have the bow, I'll probably always do the strat. You shoot, you come to this little diagonal tile right here, and then you shoot arrows left, right, and down. Uh, you can do it in any order. Uh, it is a little bit faster if you use the fire rod, left, right, and down, but if you use the fire rod here, even though it's faster, you'll have to wait for your magic uh, meter to refill later when you beat the boss. So it's kind of a trade-off. Whenever I have enough arrows and I have the bow coming in here, which is pretty frequently because, you know, it's Eastern Palace, you need the bow, um, I like to do that strat. This room here, if you cancel your stair lag by moving to the left first, uh, what you can do is you can move down here, lift this pot from the top, Hit the switch, and then you can move left, and you'll avoid this anti parry. The very clean movement path through that room. Uh, something I've started doing in this room is actually using the fire rod for these two um, for these two uh, skeletons. If I have it, it does cost some uh, uh, some magic to to do, but it's a little bit more uh, a little bit faster than if you were to use an arrow and a pot, which is uh, the traditional strategy. Traditionally, you'd want to use an arrow for the bottom one, and then chuck a pot at the top one is usually what you want to do. But if you use a fire rod, you can kill kill them really fast, and then you can you you'll have to be really ready to quick swap to arrows um, for this red Igor. And then silver arrows, um, you know, not really necessary to have a perfect strat for a silver arrow armless knights fight because it's it's usually really fast. Anyways, uh, I did look at a uh, at a clip uh, from YouTube. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head who who posted it, but if you go look at YouTube, someone posted the strat, which is really fast. So just an example of um, what you can what you can do if you, you know, practice these execution strats. Right, so Eastern Palace is done, and now we have to decide what we want to do next. So we've got a few different options. Uh, there is kind of a bunch of stuff dangling from... So you see we didn't run into this portal, right? So there's a bunch of stuff dangling from, uh, in terms of hammer and pegs, magic bat, and uh, purple chest. And we can also do K45 and bottles tablet if you wanted to do that. There's also Mire Shed plus checkerboard cave plus potentially desert if it's not boots locked. And then there's also the uh, Zora checks, all the waterfall checks that we have not done. So I decided that I'm just going to go and check out Desert Palace because, you know, I am... At this point, I am just a hookshot and potentially a boots um, from go mode, depending on Desert Palace. So I want to I wanna see um, if I need the boots to finish the game. And Desert Palace could be full clearable, and I'm basically just going to be looking for Hookshot in that case. Uh, for this warp portal, uh, you want to be either perfectly aligned with the tile or a little bit to the right, and you'll get a quick warp. So I'm going to decide to just um, go in here. I'm going to check Mire Shed first, just in case my Hookshot or Boots are in here. It's, it's, right, it's right near where I want to mirror to Desert Palace anyways. Ether 
and I didn't really even bother checking the Meyer ship, uh, start checking the Misery Meyer medallion because I'm not super interested in going in there. I have much better things to do right now. Oops. Okay, so Nether Palace, and we have to figure out if we're boots locked, and we are not. Which is great, so we know we only need the hookshot to be the game. Uh, something else is that I forgot to mention is if you go back and look at the Ice Palace hook, the Ice Palace key logic, that book, uh, because of the key layout, um, this is something that I'm not very good at at figuring out uh, on the fly, but since since I had a bunch of time to think about it, uh, the book that we got from Ice Palace is locked by the hookshot. So we know that the hookshot cannot be on uh, Bomba's tablet or either tablet or x ray really checked either tablet. It, it basically can't be on Bomba's tablet. Bomba's tablet. Okay, so we mirror back here. I'm gonna go ahead and check uh, the big chest. Remember, we're looking for one more item here. Unfortunately, it's a compass here, so we know the last item is on Landmo. We'll go ahead and just do that right now. And for Landmo, the best, most consistent and fastest way is going to be to use Silver Arrows. I have a guide on how to time these three Silver Shots using the beat of the music if you need help timing these. Uh, so I do have a tutorial on that if you're interested. Okay. So that's both items out of desert. Unfortunately, we are still looking for our hookshot. So we're going to go ahead and check out uh, Checkerboard Cave. And I'm still not interested in going to Misery Mire because it's a long dungeon for only two items and I have better stuff to do. I will note that Misery Mire is ether. Um, but uh, there's. Actually, we can't even go to Misery Mire because we don't have boots or the hook shot, so that's nice. So we don't have to worry about that. We'll go and check Checkboard Cave. Um, it is half magic. Um, always nice to have. In fact, it actually is fairly relevant here because we are on Master Sword. And having half magic with uh, Master Sword and Samaria means you can do Samaria strats against Ganon. So that can actually be fairly relevant in saving you some time. Alright, so now we gotta decide whether we wanna do all the uh, Smith Chain and Hammer Pegs and Magic Bat stuff, as well as um, Shovel Dig Spot, or whether we want to just uh, do the uh, Zora checks. And I elect to do the Zora checks. I think, uh, trying to try to remember what my thought process was here. I think this is pretty fast since you know we we had our uh, we have our flute. So really, the only reason I've I've been putting this off is because I didn't have enough money for Zora, and then once I had enough money for Zora, I had Crystal Tenders to clear. Right? So this was kind of the next priority. I think if you wanted to do Smith Chain stuff. Uh, there are more items there, but I think if you're going to do that, you should also think about clearing the rest of Thief's Town. Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I think this overall is going to be more checks in a faster amount of time. Because Waterf Waterfall Cave is, is just like two items that are very quick to get, right? So... Uh, whereas if you do the Smith Chain stuff, it's kind of more checks, but it's kind of uh, it's not it's not front loaded, right? So it's it's more checks, but it, it takes a longer time to get to all of them. And there's a hookshot, right? I think the other reason that I wanted to do this is because um, doing the Smith Chain stuff will also lead you to um, if you look at what I what we have left, we have. Uh, we have all the Zora stuff, um, and we have all the Smith Chain stuff, and then we don't have a lot of other great options. We have like Spike Cave, Graveyard Ledge, which are both one offs at this point, uh, and uh, Hookshot Cave was not accessible, and then Meyer was not accessible, right? So we don't have a lot of options, which means if we do, which means going into Swamp Palace looking for a Hookshot is a real option. So I'd rather do Zora now and then do the rest of Smith Chain, and then what if I still don't have Hookshot? And I can even skip checking Bomba's tablet. If I still don't have the hookshot, then I go straight into Swamp Palace. 
Whereas if I did it in the other order, I'd go do Smith Chain, and then I'd have to decide whether I want to go into Swamp Palace first or go do those aura checks and then come back to Swamp Palace, right? So um, that's another reason why I did this route. And now I have the hookshot, so I'm ostensibly in go mode, pending um, ET again, it's our big key um, on the torch, which hopefully doesn't happen. Um, because that is still an option, I'm going to open any chests that are directly in my path, but uh, looking for the boots, but I will not go out of my way to get any items. Uh, I, and again, you want to enter this portal from the left side. Okay, so we'll just go in mostly go mode uh, Swamp Palace here. And at this point, you do still want to track your items, uh, just in case you do need the boots, right? You should know how many items are left in each dungeon. And you should be thinking about, like, okay, so if I get to GT and it turns out I need the boots, where am I going to look first, right? And it's probably going to be, um, you know, if your first option is probably going to be everything else on the mountain, so that would be, like, uh, Hookshot Cave and Spike Cave. But um, if you still don't find your boots there, then you can either come back to Swamp Palace uh, if there's a bunch of items that you left behind there, or you can uh, go do the Smith Chain stuff. So that is something you know you're you're you're, you're not you're not necessarily done with um, tracking routing um, on the sea. You have to remember that. Doing uh, some more diver down set up here. And again, I'm picking up these chests because. They're on the way, and if I have the boots, not only with save time, but it could, there is a small chance that they are required. So. And I'll pick up um, this chest in this room as well. And then we'll head straight to Armos. Oh, sorry, not Armos, Argus. Pretty straightforward fight. I'll just fast forward through this. And then once over arrow, we'll do it. And then we're off to GT. And hopefully, we don't need boots. Here, since I have the red mail and a bunch of hearts, I don't worry about getting hit, you know, by these fireballs and these enemies here. If you're worried about getting hit, of course, you can use Burna. Another option is you can use the iframes from the hookshot. So you can shoot your hookshot over to the right, and that will give you enough iframes to avoid the fireball. And this guy will also reposition himself to be out of the way. And then you should pick whatever. Um, GT route you feel is best or you're more, most comfortable with. Uh, I do this route where um, I do hope left, um, but that's just it's just because just that's what I'm used to. It's not necessarily because it's um, the optimal one or the best one. And we see that there's nothing on the on the torch, so we are officially in go mode. Don't need the boots, which is great. There's our big key, so mirror it right away. We do have at least one small key, so we're good to do the climb. Unfortunately, we have to do the climb without boots, which can be a little bit awkward, but... Um, you know, that's, you have to do that sometimes. Uh, for this Mimics room, I like to do the strat um, where you uh, walk right and then Flash your sword down and then move to the left. This is covered in the FMG uh, NMG tutorial um, as one of the alternate possible strategies. And I, ha I happen to like this one because I'm pretty consistent at it. Uh, and for this room, I like to do this strat where I kind of go right, down, right, hold my sword out like this. Uh, and that, that is also covered in the FMG tutorial. I wanted to take a look at that. 
really great resource um, because it offers uh, multiple options for, for different rooms. I think I probably could have done this room a little bit faster. I'm not using I'm not used to doing this room without boots actually. Okay, now we're into the gauntlet. Something that's interesting is if you go and uh, hug this left wall and you kind of pump against this wall by holding left and then uh, mashing down, you kind of get this weird movement that lets you zip to the door really fast like that. So experiment with that. Um, I think that is faster than, than moving diagonally because you're on this conveyor belt. So try that next time um, if, you're, if you're in that room. Here, if you're not confident with these three skeletons, it's perfectly acceptable to just use ether because um, it'll be very consistent at wiping out these three enemies. Uh, this room kind of sucks without the boots because you might have to chase these down depending on the RG. This room is also really awkward without boots. Uh, for this room, you see I have the fire rod. Usually, uh, you can just hit this, the pots here, and the splash damage will actually um, take out this skeleton. Um, but in this case, uh, for some reason, my splash, uh, my fire rod splash variable wasn't set that way, so I actually had to hit it directly with the fire rod. Okay, we're coming up to land mode two. Uh, again, you want to use silver arrows if you can. I do have a tutorial on how to set up the timing for this particular strat um, using a very consistent uh, uh, movement path. If you're having trouble getting a silver arrow uh, timing for this uh, one cycle, um, you can look up that tutorial. And the rest of the Ganon climb is pretty straightforward standard stuff. Since we have, don't have the boots, you'll see that I swap um, over to the hookshot here, just in case I need to stun any of these guards on the way. Hopefully they played nicely. Same thing for this next room coming up. You might have to stun some of these guards with the hookshot if they're in your way. Like that. And then torch room. all fairly straightforward stuff. Uh, you can hookshot to this pot if you want. And I'm not bothering to open any of these chests here because um, even if I do find the boots, I don't think it's going to save me enough time to be worthwhile. I also am not worried about... Uh, so there's a full magic in this pot, uh, for, for if, you, if you didn't already know, but I already have enough magic um, and I have half magic as well, so I'm not worried about my magic situation. If I were still on Master Sword, I would definitely want to get a magic refill because then I would be um, probably using some Mario strats against um, Ganon's uh, first two phases. But since I have Tempered Sword, I don't need to worry about that. This room is also kind of awkward without boots, but you can weave your way through these enemies, I found. Um, it's going to be a little bit faster if you go on the conveyor belts rather than sliding on the ice, I believe. I haven't, I haven't really practice that room too much without the boots, but that's what I found. And I think uh, Agatou had some very <laughs> convenient lineups for the seed. So yeah, yeah, this, this was very easy. And then all that's left is to take down Ganon. So since you have Tempered Sword, uh, try your best to get the one and one Unfortunately, he's in the corner now, so I can only get one silver arrow shot. 
Uh, if possible, you want to be able to light the torches when Ganon is kind of like at a position where he's, um, you know, near the bottom of the screen, but not exactly at the bottom. That way you can get a triple here. Doesn't always work out, you know, it depends on his uh, timing and, and work positioning and, and, you know, when you light the torches, but that's kind of what you want to shoot for. And uh, I forget what the exact end time was. Uh, I guess we'll wait for the credits to roll and then we'll, we'll show that. But um, yeah, so it was en ended up being go mode uh, hook shots on Zora, and I think that was pretty reasonable because we didn't have any money for Zora for a long time, and it wasn't really. I didn't. I didn't think it made sense to farm money specifically for Zora. Uh, if you want, like, I don't think it made sense to do like a Google hand glitch. Uh, I think we had other, other other options to check, right? Looking for money. And then once we had money, we had a few other priorities to check on the way. We had some Crystal Dungeons to clear in terms of Pod, Eastern, and uh, Desert Palace. So we did those first. And I think once it made sense to go to Zora, since we had enough money and we had no other pressing issues, uh, uh, no other pressing pressing uh, checks to do, then we went there and then that's, that's what got us our go mode. A couple, couple things you could have done differently that I think would have been totally valid were to do um, to not do catfish upon your first uh, entry into the dark world. I think that's perfectly reasonable, especially if you want to wait for the mirror. So you can do, uh, you know, graveyard ledge, then catfish, then mirror um, to do Zora checks. I think that's very reasonable. Um, and I think I like there's something else. Uh, don't don't skip harmless hallway like I did. Um, I guess I just miscounted checks there. Um, and stuff like that. So, um, that's how I did the seed. Um, this was actually a pretty fun exercise. I would recommend if you're ever struggling with execution, um, you can do this kind of seed where you do this kind of practice where you save state repeatedly until you get every room, you know, executed the way that you want it to. Um, it is going to take a long time, but you know that that's how you get better execu at execution, right? You practice these rooms over and over again. So. Doing it in the context of an actual seed is is a is a fun way to practice that. So I do that sometimes every once in a while, and um, hopefully this was instructional in some way. I'm not going to claim that this was the best route through the seed, or that I made the best decisions, or even had the best execution. But this is um, my walkthrough of the seed. So let me know if you have any questions, and uh, maybe I'll do another one of these sometime. But hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.